Hey guys, what's up? So uh, I'm back in the studio now. Um, I know it's been a little while since I've recorded a video. Um, and well, that's because we've been able to reopen. Um, pretty excited about that. We're open very limited though, you know, so um, we are only open for members, no classes yet, unfortunately. And um, only for uh, three people at a time. So all the members have to sign up to a schedule. Um, and that's based on, you know, the local laws here in Berlin. Um, we're not able to have classes because we can't have <clears throat> so many people in the room at once and everyone's got to keep a certain distance from each other. And that's not so easy with the um, small studio that we have. So anyway, um, I'm really happy to be at least open again in a limited way. Members should start arriving in about a half an hour, but I was hoping I could whip out a quick video for you guys today because I have gotten a few questions about, boom, these guys here. So, down, down, down. Yeah, so these are wedging boards. You've seen them in a couple of my videos already. Um, probably, if you watch my other videos. <laughs> um, so I actually need to make two more for classes that will eventually happen. I've got the perfect size board that I just found and I found some fabric. So I'm gonna just do it and film it for you guys so you can see how it's done. It's really easy. Um, this is gonna be a short video. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Okay, so... Um... <laughs> Here, I've got some boards. They're just um, an old, from an old door, actually. Um, but I think it happens to be, it's basically this exact same size as the other one, so we'll fit right in. Um, with your wood, it's important that it's pretty thick. Um, I mean, it can be thin, it just needs to be strong. So um, I guess you could probably use MDF or something else that's like a really hard wood. Uh, but if you're going to use um, uh, normal, I think this is pine, um, like the cheap stuff, <laughs> um, you're gonna want to use it a little bit thicker because um, the fabric will pull on the wood a lot. So you need to make sure that um, it's strong enough to hold it. So, and then I also have just some fabric I don't really know what this is from. Um, it's a bit dirty, that's fine. Um, I just need any kind of cloth. So I, I usually use white cloth in the studio just because I have it lying around, it's cheap. Um, but uh, really you could use an old bed sheet. And, you know, like this is all muslin because I just have it. Um, but you can use anything really. Um, it definitely helps that it's a bit thicker. So like I think canvas would be ideal. What you don't want is like really delicate fabric. Um, and I would probably guess that you don't want anything artificial um, because probably some fibers get into the clay and they need to burn out. And then the last thing you need is a staple gum. Okay, so first I'm just measuring out the fabric using the board as a guide. I'm aiming for five to 10 centimeters of extra fabric around the board. That's two to four inches for my American friends. I don't know if you know about this trick about fabric, but you can just cut a slit in the beginning. And as long as you are going along the grain, you can just rip the fabric. It's pretty handy. Okay, so just make sure that the wood piece is centered on the fabric and fold over the first side and staple it in. You want to make a cross at first, so put one staple in the middle of each side. Once you put the first staple in, you should go directly across and pull the fabric as tight as you can before you do the second staple. Then you want to choose one side and go from the center out towards the corner, pulling tight with each staple. Each staple should be no farther than five centimeters from the last. The corners can be a little fiddly, so just do the best you can and fold them as neat as possible. Definitely you want to give the corners a couple of extra staples as well. So then you want to go back towards the center where you started and go out towards the other corner until you have one side that's completely finished. 
Next, you wanna go to the opposite side, starting from the middle again and going outward to each corner. Make sure you're pulling really tight on these ones since now we are locking each side into place. If your staple gun is a little cheapo like mine, it can help to have a hammer around to pound those extra staples in that didn't go all the way in. So I'm using a little plastic mallet here, but any kind of hammer will work fine. If you don't have a hammer, you can use a stone or anything strong and heavy. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side of the board. So now when all sides are finished, your fabric is tight and you're done. You can leave it like this, but I like to fold over the edges of the fabric to prevent the fabric from fraying. In the end, it just takes a couple of extra staples, but it will definitely make your wedging board last much longer. So I just go ahead and do that all the way around. Okay, well, I run out of staples. <laughs> um, and I don't have any more, so I can't actually finish this today. That's so annoying. Um, but uh, you can sort of see what I'm going for. I mean, it's enough so you can see like what is happening here. Um, I'm just finishing the edges and then I would do the second one, but uh, I have to go buy staples. <laughs> Um, but um, yeah, that's basically it. So here we have our board. Um, this one has a little bump on it, which I'm kind of annoyed with, but um, really we're only going to be using these maybe once every two months or something like that because um, it's just for these private classes that we have that we have up to 10 people. Normally the um, hand building classes are actually just eight and wheel classes are only six. So um, we only use these pretty rarely and it's actually fine. You know, there's, if you are wedging on it and there's a little bump, I mean, kind of in the corner anyway, it's, it's fine. <laughs> So I just wanted to say one more thing about these um, is how you clean them. Um, I just use a um, wet sponge. So first I'll use a rib to kind of remove any extra clay and then just a wet sponge to um, remove all of the clay that's in the fabric. Of course, you don't get all of it out, but it's enough to um, use it for different colors of clay and um, it shouldn't stain the other ones. Certainly if you're working with a porcelain and like a black clay, you wouldn't want to mix those at all. Um, so have separate wedging boards for those. Um, and so after you clean it, um, you're going to need to let them dry. So we usually stack them down here when they're drying out. So you just like lean them against something so that they can dry. And then later on in the morning, usually when I arrive, I'll restack them and put them away here. So that's where they live. And this is only to prevent warping. So um, if you leave clay on there for two logs, say if you put reclaim on it or something, um, and you leave it for overnight, you might come in and your board is warped. You can straighten them out. I'll put them underneath a bunch of clay or something that's heavy to straighten them out. But um, obviously you want to prevent that in the first place. So I don't usually leave clay on them overnight. I'll leave clay on the plaster bats overnight. So on the wedging boards, they're just for use of wedging and uh, hand building in the moment. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. I'm done talking, absolutely done. And the members are gonna be here any minute. So um, talk to you later.